Well, flash forward in time, uh, don't ask why, but I have two engine mounts here of a 318 IS. This is a standard one. Uh, I have or I've ordered both because, uh, well, just a, a question of, of timing between uh, orders. I was uh, seeking for uh, supports, the left and the right one. Uh, so this is these are both left engine mounts for for the M42 engine that were mounted on the on the 318 IS of, on the E30. <clears throat> the reason uh, uh, I show them both is because I want to show you what I was explaining earlier. Um, I had to bring this one to uh, to make it welded a block of aluminium on it because uh, the support of the admission uh, will need this uh, this um, block here so I can screw it here with the with the H support that uh, comes with the with the engine and uh, it is just how I got it from the from the well the the company that uh, be so kind to weld it to me and also to mechanize this block of aluminium to the height that I need it so normally uh, there will be uh, not much more to do uh, but to maybe grind it a little so I have a sus the surface the surface height that I need and also uh, drill some two holes in it and also make the 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 screw inside of the holes i have special tools special tools uh that uh this is, was already in the workshop because i use it pretty often this is uh this is a set of tools that is used to um put the threads the threads back together on the old bolts or uh, even here uh, to put some threads inside of a hole that you will drill yourself. That's so. That's the tools I will use to place the the two holes that I need here. So here, as a comparison, I will show you the standard engine mounts of the M44 engine that is uh, bolted on the E36 subframe. As you will see, both of them are pretty different in length and also in height. If I compare this, posi this position here, so you see here, uh, th these are the two holes where the uh, intake is bolted on, on the M44 engine and on the 318IS E30, there is no, there is no, no way you can bolt it here. Uh, as a matter of fact, there's a difference of height also, of height here. So you will need to uh, make weld uh, a block of aluminium, just as I did. And normally, uh, once you've done that, uh, you'll be able to bolt the, the intake on the engine mounts of the E318 IS. So here with the, the engine in front, it's easier to explain. So what I'm trying to hold is hold this extra weight this is all the admission system, all the admission pipe, where the hell filter is connecting. Um, here's the, the butterfly for the admission. And all this, all this mass here is only held by the uh, engine head and uh, by this support here that you can see. There's a, a cooling hose in the middle. But that's the support, it's bolted here and here, and then it goes straight to the engine mount. So the bolts will go directly on these two holes. So now we'll mark the area where I need to drill, and then I will use the, the special tools I showed you earlier to make the, the, the thread of the bolt.
audio jungle. And now I should be able to take my screw and screw it in without any problem. So, as you can see, it is like a charm entering inside your hole. So, this is it for uh, this is one hole. I will put the engine arm on the car again, make sure the hole is aligned. I'm sure it is. And then I will do the second one that is already marked here and do the same process and then put it on the car and uh, bolt everything in and forget about it for a long period of time. So here is the result. The intake support is now bolted on four points, just as the standard one. Thank thanks to the the aluminium block that uh, we've installed here. So you can, uh, as I explained what I did, drill the the holes and uh, make the threads. So I could bolt there, and as you can see, they are perfectly uh, tightened. And uh, the support here is making contact perfectly flat to the surface that we added. So now we shouldn't have any problem with the, the intake. Okay, so I just wrapped the, um, the manifold, the exhaust manifold. Uh, it's a brand new one I got on eBay, an inox, inox manifold, but uh, I had it wrapped in uh, Kevlar. Kevlar wrap, so I'm not showing step by step. I was alone, so I couldn't make videos while doing it. But I have another video on my channel where I'm doing the the one of the Clio over there. So uh, it's not uh, it's not complicated. It's pretty step forward, and uh, there's plenty of tutorials on on internet. So so this is the shaft that I also bought on uh, on eBay. This is an E30 non uh, air bank model uh, from the US with uh, um, steering assistance so uh, what we need to do to adapt to the Z3 steering rack is uh, I need to put this uh, remove these um, rivets here both of them and install these separators here is because what we need is we need this this overall length to be shorter so uh, once you remove the these rivets here, I believe this is made for in case of a crash that the steering column has uh, a distance to shrink so it doesn't uh, well go through your chest, I believe. So anyway, this will be a race car. So we will have uh, racing seats and uh, racing harnesses as well. So. Uh, normally our chest uh, will not go anywhere so uh, what we need to do to adapt to the Z3, Z3 rack is uh, this uh, remove these two rivets place these uh, adapters here as you can see they are this this piece here to make it short goes here also what I got here is uh, there's a rubber bush uh, a rubber bushing inside of uh, uniting the the column with the steering wheel and with the steering rack and this is made to uh, give a softer touch to the steering wheel so give it uh, give it more comfort but as again it's a race car so we want a direct feeling uh, we want the direction to be the steering to be as direct as possible so I don't I don't want any rubber. This is a solid piece of aluminium. It's also produced by AKG Motorsports in uh, in the USA. I had pretty much struggles to get there, get this through custom, customs uh, in Spain. I don't know why. I received uh, new wheels for the S2000 this week and they went through the IHL and uh, they went like a charm in one day. They went through the customs after, of course, I paid the taxes. So as you can see here, uh, now I'm on the part where I'm going to install the spacers first. 
So as you can see, I used my cutting disc here to remove the head of the of the rivet, and then with this tool and a hammer. Oh, sorry, have the glove in the middle. With this tool and a hammer, I pushed it down. So now the rivet is hanging here. When I remove this one, this whole piece will fall, and I could then remove the two rivets. With the rivets are touching the the base, so they are not going anywhere. So we are. I'm going to do the other side, and then this all this piece will go out. So as I said, now the two rivets are gone, and I've been able to remove the the upper part. The lower part is has stayed in place. So what I will do first, as you can see, it's pretty dirty. It's uh, it stayed that way since they removed it from the car. So I'm gonna put it in my in my sandblaster here, and. Uh, I will clean it, make it look and shine properly. Okay, so now that everything has been sandblasted, as you can see, everything's clean. Without the, this, sorry for the shaky hands, despite of this uh, small dots of uh, of grease or dirt, uh, everything came pretty easily and everything looks clean. So now I'll continue with the process and remove uh, this um, these rivets, four rivets and place this aluminium insert here. Okay, so now the this rubber um, this rubber steering suspension, shall I call it that way, is removed. So as you can see, I've cut out the the head of the of the rivets, pushed it down with a, this tool and a hammer, and now we have these two pieces that are coming together. I've made uh, a mark here and a mark here, so I know these two ones. Uh, Align this way, and now we will put this with some Loctite. Well, it's li liquid moly with uh, same products. Um, and now I will put the the aluminium block here. Okay, so here's the final piece. The separators I've mentioned earlier. The new bushing here that is now uh, fully of, made of aluminium, mechanized aluminium, so it will be as rigid as possible. And now normally we'll have the length necessary to connect. Length necessary to connect the the Z3 rack to the steering column. So now next thing is. Um, because this this uh, shaft here, you have to put the the steering rack at the same time as you install the shaft. So uh, because the distance is otherwise is not enough, and uh, this part will enter curved or bent into the upper one, and then it will not fit. So what you need to do is fit the bottom part or fix the upper part shall i say and once the upper part is fixed uh, present the 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 steering rack and insert at the same time that you put the steering rack in place in the subframe and then the last bit will be to install the the pieces of aluminium that i got over there to uh, compensate the the difference of, of width of the steering rack of the E36 and and the, the subframe of the E30. Okay, so regarding the serpentine belt, 
Now I can I can say that it's solved because um, as you can see I removed the the um, um, steering pump the shrink pump the pulley is out and the AC compressor as well is out so now we only have the water pump and the uh, alt alternator connected to the to the crankshaft so this will give us uh, a little extra and a little less effort to the engine to to rotate the, the crankshaft so um, it, the serpentine belt I used I'll show you on this side it's a 6 bit pay K1050 and uh, it fits perfectly as you can see I've modified absolutely nothing the tensioner but the tensioner is exactly the same uh, standard tensioner I keep this pulley here as well because I wanted the serpentine belt to have uh, uh, some curve here because uh, then it adds some friction contact to this pulley as the pulley on the crankshaft is uh, we have a surface tension is like a, maybe half of the pulley which is more than enough uh, that's what I have on the, on the Clio and uh, I never had any issue of the pulley uh, uh, drifting over the crankshaft pulley and uh, the serpentine belt. So <clears throat> the, the belt is properly tensioned. The tensioner is pushing uh, the inside part of the belt. These belts are really flat on the inside. They have a, a very flat surface. So it's no ma major issue as well. Uh, I mean, this belt costs um, six euros, maybe a little less. Depends on your provider and if you can purchase it on on a spare parts um, shop where you can get uh, an extra discount. But anyway, um, I'm very very happy with the setting because I had to modify absolutely nothing. Uh, I read on the internet that you have to modify your your alternator. Um, uh, support and absolutely don't recommend this this is a pain in the ass a headache you will never have a strong support as the standard one which is in aluminium so uh, the less you touch on the on the casting and on the supports of, of an engine better i made the mistake on the clio it's working but i'm not 100 percent happy with it and uh I'm, I'm pretty sure that it can be an issue on a, on a racing, endurance racing. So that's what I wanted to show you guys. Uh, I've, I've found absolutely nothing on the internet uh, regarding those swaps and this kind of, uh, of modes. And uh, so I wanted to show you where and how you can pass your serpentine belt. The tensioner is supplying very well, very nice tension on the, on the serpentine belt. Uh, also, what you will need, and that is uh, full, uh, the internet is full of content, you will need this piece here to um, um, make a roll, make a, a loop, uh, looping your, your uh, steering rack, so there's no extra pressure when you turn from one side to the other, so that's the, that's, um, that's it, so that's the only thing that you need to do, let's remove the 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 part that you don't want and then uh, install the serpentine belt